So I just purchased this brand new Woodpecker's router table. And while I absolutely love it, the fit, the finish, the quality, I mean, everything is top notch. It's got to be one of my favorite tools. I mean, just look how happy I am. But unfortunately, it's missing one thing, and that is storage. And we fixed that today on East Carolina Woodworks. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Bringing you guys another video that I'm super excited about. We are gonna be tackling the router table. Just like the intro said, I absolutely love this thing, everything about it, but it is lacking one thing, and that is storage. We have a bunch of wasted space underneath it, and uh, yeah, I'm about to fill that bad boy up. We're gonna be tackling dust collection, router bit storage, tool storage, and uh, I got a little secret that I'm gonna add to this thing, but you'll have to stick around to the end to see it. So, I'm gonna stop talking, Let's get to work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm pretty sure I've had this video done, just needed to be edited for at least about two months. But anyway, here we are, just taking some measurements. So we're gonna start off by enclosing the sides of the router table. And once I have my measurements, I can move over to the table saw and cut these down to size. Now I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this saying, that looks like a cabinet side. Well, if you guessed that, then you would be correct. I actually cut some cabinets wrong, so I had these pieces just laying around forever and figured this would be perfect to get these out of my way and use these for something that I'll actually enjoy instead of sitting in the corner collecting dust. But anyway, once I have them ripped to their width, then I'll go ahead and cross cut these to their actual final length and we can take these back to the router table. And if all my measurements were correct, this piece should slide in and fit nice and snug like a bug in a rug. I don't even know if that's a saying, but I just, I don't know, like to say it, I guess. But anyway, yep, it fits in there just like it should, and I'm pretty pleased with the fit. Now, to attach these pieces, I will be using these black three-quarter inch pan head screws. And luckily for me, there's already holes that were pre-drilled in the frame of the router table, so it's pretty simple to just, you know, use the holes that are there and uh, screw it right in. There's not really much explanation I got for you on that. But once I have the two side panels completely installed, we can go ahead and move over to measuring for the lower panels. And just like the upper panels, it's pretty much the same thing. Just taking some measurements, headed to the table saw, sliding my fence, throwing in some extra footage so you can watch me actually work, and uh, just cut the pieces down to their size, and they will be installed the exact same way as the upper cabinet parts we already installed in the router table. So once I had both pieces cut, I was able to take them over to the router table and install them the exact same way. Using the same screws that I used on the upper panel, there were two holes that allowed me to attach the top of the lower panel, but there was nothing at the bottom. Now I contemplated on using additional screws or pre-drilling some holes to screw in the bottom, but later on in the video, I will be adding a lower panel and I think that will keep pressure on the bottom of the lower side panels and I don't think it's really gonna go anywhere. So that's kinda of what I was hoping and praying on and with that being done, we can move on. And now that both end panels are completely done and installed, we can move on to measuring the middle and lower shelves. Now these aren't gonna be exactly like shelves, more so supports and actually enclosing all the drawers and storage. But once again, cutting down some old cabinet parts that I cut wrong a long time ago, this makes perfect use to get rid of some of this scrap wood. Cause if I didn't, it would just sit around like it's already been doing for three months or so. So anyway, with that done, we'll just cut all that stuff down to size and then we can move back to the router table and get it installed. Now, like I said before, the pressure from that lower shelf should keep the bottom sides from trying to cave in. Therefore, I felt like I didn't need any screws and I think it's gonna work out just great. But once I got the bottom in, I was able to wiggle and shimmy and get the top in kind of snug, kind of tight the way I like it. Okay, that sounded bad, but yeah. So here's what it looks like now. So the next thing I wanted to do was start enclosing the router itself. And luckily for me, I had these center braces that run the width of the router table and I can use these to screw my plywood into. So with that being said, I can go ahead and take a measurement from the lower shelf to those supports and we can head over to the table saw and cut some down. 
Now, if you can see that little dado there, I'm still cutting down old scrap plywood. That once again was from an old cabinet that is no longer being built, so I'm making great use out of it. Now once I got the pieces cut, I had to figure out how I was going to attach the bottom since the top had the rails already there, which would be easy. So I decided to do pocket holes. It's going to go to the inside. You'll probably never see them because there will be drawers and other sorts of storage in the way. So it's shop furniture. Just use some pocket holes. This is a great use for pocket holes in my opinion. So once I had all the pocket holes drilled, I can move back to the router table and go ahead and pop out the router. Now I need to get this out of my way so I'll have a little bit more room to work inside of the cabinet and not have to fight that the whole time. So my original plan was to take this plywood and screw it into the metal brackets. That was the whole reason I cut these pieces to fit right against those metal brackets. But for some reason, don't know why, I decided to go against my original plan, pre-drill some holes from the outside and attach it using screws on the front and the back of the plywood supports. Yeah, I'm not really sure why I decided to do it this way, but in the end it worked out just fine and, well, I'm happy with it. So once I got everything screwed in and everything is nice and tight and the top's not going nowhere, we can move on to screwing in some pocket screws into the pocket holes that I already pre-drilled. Now as you can see here, I'm using a square, making sure everything is in line from top to bottom. I don't want any issues when I go start putting drawers in here with drawer slides and things aren't fitting right and rubbing and... Well, yeah, it just makes sense to make it square. Especially being a cabinet maker. I mean, come on, everything I build has to be square. But anyway, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and slide the router back inside. Of course, I really don't know why I do this because I have to remove it several times throughout this build. I guess I just kept wanting to put it in there and just, I don't know, see what it was gonna look like, I guess. But anyway, next thing I wanted to do was go ahead and close off the back. Now, because there's no real good place to actually attach the quarter inch back, I had to cut little spacer pieces to extend from side to side. That way I had some way to attach this quarter inch back. So once I had all the measurements, went back to the table saw and cut a bunch of little blocks down to width. Now this can fluctuate, it can be anywhere from a couple inches to four inches, but I think I went somewhere around about two and a half inches because I felt like that would have been plenty enough to have somewhere to be able to attach the quarter inch back. But once I did that, I went ahead and drilled some pocket holes in it, and as you can see here, mistakes were made. For some reason I get so fast and get ahead of myself, and well, I just cut things wrong. I'm only human. But there you go, so that's what it should look like. So now I have all those pieces in there and I actually have somewhere where I can nail the back panel into. And now we can go ahead and take measurements. This will be in two separate sections. I'll have a top section that goes down to the middle black rail and then there will also be a lower section that goes below the middle shelf. As you can see how I'm measuring, that's how they will be cut. And once I have all those measurements taken down, I can go back to the table saw and rip these pieces to their size. And once I have all those pieces ripped to the size, well, I think you know what comes next. Gotta install them. And just like that, we have the top portion cut. And as you can see, it fits right between the top and middle rail. And I just attach this using some 18 gauge brad nails. And do the same exact thing to the bottom using some, I think, inch and a quarter maybe. Maybe inch and a half brad nails, not really sure. But anyway, next thing we can do is move on to getting ready to install drawer slides. Now as you just saw in that clip, there is a space between the rail and the side panel. So I had to cut some little supports or some spacer pieces to kind of fill that out so I can attach drawer slides that will be flush with the frame of the router table. Ooh, that was a lot to say in that one clip. I almost got tongue tied, but I made it. Whew. As you see here, just cutting these down the size and then I'll take these back to the router table and apply some wood glue along with some CA glue. I was really hoping I'd be able to get a drill in there and run some screws. It would have been a lot easier, but unfortunately that space was way too tight and even a 90 degree attachment for a drill would not allow me to get in there easily. I tried, tried several ways, and uh, yeah, it was not going to work. So I relied on the CA glue to actually hold the piece there while the wood glue set up. But anyway, once that was done, we can start installing our drawer slides. And you can see that I have a three quarter inch piece of plywood on the bottom to set the space for the drawer slide. Now I just attach these to the sides, going from front to back, making sure I set them back about a 32nd of an inch because I want the drawer box to sit just inside the frame. So after I got all my drawer slides installed, I realized there was this little bit of space underneath the router. 
and I figured I didn't need all that space for the router itself so why not add another drawer underneath it. Since this is my router table and you know I want plenty of storage I figured well let's just go for it. So I added some pieces to the side doing a dry test fit to make sure everything is going to look good and once I'm satisfied I'll do the same thing that I did on the sides. I'll use some wood glue, use some CA glue with some accelerator to attach the sides where my drawer slides will actually be screwed into and then we can go ahead and install the drawer slides the same way we did all the other drawer slides and then I'll attach the top and god just look at that router table oh boy I can't wait to put this thing to use but still got a lot of work so let's keep moving forward now that we have all that done we can go ahead and start taking some measurements for the actual router bit storage drawers now I'm sure you've seen plenty of YouTube videos and there are several ways to make these drawers but because I got something new inside the shop I decided to put my wits to the test and try using this Inventables X-Carve Pro CNC machine. Now as you can see here it's drilling a bunch of big three quarter inch holes in this piece of plywood and then it's going to cut it out into the exact size of the drawer that I need. Now I know this doesn't make a lot of sense right now but if you stick around and keep watching you will see exactly how this thing works. I will have to say, having this tool in the shop is going to be super handy. I mean, anything you can think of, design it in their software and just watch this machine go to work. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's going in those holes? Well, this is what's going in those holes. I also 3D print these router bit collets. They are awesome and I have to give a huge shout out to Travis over there at Shop Nation for getting me into 3D printing. Because I too now have two Prusas that, well, constantly keep working around the clock. It's like having an employee that you don't have to pay. Well, you do have to actually pay them at least one time because you gotta buy the machines. But anyway, I printed a bunch of these little router bit collets. Now, I actually did design these and as you can see, they fit into the holes like so. Don't know why I decided to go with this pattern, I just thought it looked cool. But what's neat about these are they have a taper design that actually holds a quarter inch shank along with a half inch shank and it's a friction fit so it's snug it fits in there it's nice it's secure it's not going nowhere but also very easy to pull out you don't have to stress yourself out but once I had all those printed and I think I had somewhere around like I don't know 66 of them I think I might have printed I went to town putting all these in the drawer parts that I cut out using the CNC now once I had all that done I had to figure out how I wanted to construct this drawer now to be 100% honest I had no idea how I was going to do this so the first step I decided to take was cut down pieces on the miter saw. Now I did know that this drawer needed to have sides so I can mount my drawer slides to it. And I knew that I wanted the router bit tray to sit in the center of the side rails. So I used a spacer block to put underneath it that way it would line up right in the center. And once I was happy with the fit then I could move over to spreading some glue and attach it using some inch and a half 18 gauge brad nails. And once I have one side completely done, we can flip this thing around, add glue to the other side, and attach the other side rail. So in these drawers, I decided to just do two trays worth of router bit storage. And then on the bottom tray will be pretty much empty to just house wrenches or just any little things that I might need for the router table itself. And as you can see here, you got two trays that hold router bits and then the bottom tray is just empty like I said to hold extra router bits or anything that I may just need to throw at the bottom so there will be two sets of these three tier drawers so once I have all the tiers completed with all the router bit storage and the tray built and the next thing I had to do was figure out how I was going to connect all three tiers together and well the simplest solution to me was to add a front and a back that way I could connect all three pieces to the front and the back. So once I had all those pieces cut we could go ahead and start adding some glue and attaching the fronts and the backs. Now I'm just using inch and a half brad nails here and this is pretty much just holding the pieces in place while the glue dries. And once you have one side done you can go ahead and attach the other side and then we can use spacer blocks to add our second tier. Now the spacing really can kind of depend on what you may want in the bottom tray. You could make it smaller, you can make it larger. Really it doesn't matter. I kind of went with like an even spacing and once I had it where I was, you know, happy I just went ahead and uh, slapped some brad nails in there on the second tier and then went ahead and finally added the third tier at the top. And once I had one drawer built, well, I had to repeat the process and do the same thing for the second one. And once that's done, we can move over to installing them in the router table. 
Now as you can see here, I just put a piece of quarter inch plywood at the bottom to get the drawer up off the bottom so nothing rubs when you move it in and out. So once I'm happy with the alignment, I can go ahead and start screwing the drawer into the drawer slides, or at least the extensions. And I just move from left to right, screwing them in one by one. Now if you're interested in these drawer slides, these are soft clothes and they are by a company I think called Revante. I will link them down below. They are by far the best side mount drawer slides that I've found that are also budget friendly. But once I get one installed, I gotta do the same thing on the other side and uh, yeah, super thrilled with the way this looks. It turned out great and I'm just super happy that uh, it, the drawer actually worked because I really had no plan. I just kind of made it up as I went. But as you can see here, both of them are installed and they look awesome. Super, super happy. So now that we have the router bit storage drawers installed, we can move over to actually building the regular drawers that will be in the router table. Now, I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on building drawer boxes because I do have a in-depth video that I will link above. You can check that video out if you wanna see how I build drawer boxes. This, uh, this might be slightly actually a little different because I do typically use three quarter inch material and use pocket holes, but pretty much the same method uh, the only difference is here I'm going to be using brad nails to join this because I'm only using half inch plywood but once I have everything cut down to its size I'll take everything back to the table saw and cut a dado groove in the bottom of every single piece to house the bottom panel now a lot of times you need to sneak up on the cut so I usually run one pass move the fence and well do it again but once I have that completely done, I'll add some glue and then brad nails to hold this box together. And as you can see, the back piece is a little bit shorter, so it will allow the bottom panel to slide right past it, and I can shoot some brad nails in it. But anyway, if you want to check out that video, I'll link it up below. You can go check out how I build in-depth drawer boxes. Everything is the exact same, except they use pocket holes for joinery. And once I have all the drawer boxes completely done, we can move over to installing them in the actual router table. Now, once again, I'm using quarter inch strips on the bottom to keep the drawer off the base of the cabinet. Now, I also have a video that's all about installing drawer boxes along with drawer faces. I'll link that as well if you want an in-depth review on that. But anyway, as you can see here, all the drawers are completely installed. And uh, yeah, what, I, what can I say? It just looks absolutely gorgeous. And here I am just doing a little test push on everything and uh, yeah, there you go, get it in there. But uh, yeah, so I'm super thrilled with the way this thing's turning out. I love the fact that I'm gonna have all the storage and uh, yeah, I'm super happy as you can see. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take measurements and cut all the drawer faces that I need to attach to the drawer boxes. Now I had all intentions on making a grain match front with all the drawer faces, but I made a calculated error at some point in this and uh, well one of the pieces didn't quite work out so I had to just kind of resort to what I had left and and make it work but anyway so all I pretty much did was cut down a large square or a large rectangle and cut that into several smaller rectangles for the drawer faces now once again I made an error so I had to end up cutting another piece and as you can see here the very first piece I went to put up, I could see that I was short or it wasn't quite wide enough. And yeah, you know, it happens. But I had to resort to cutting more pieces and unfortunately the grain is not all going to match. But anyway, I'm not going to let that slow me down. It's shop furniture and it's still going to look great. Now, I have been a huge fan of True Position tools. This jig right here is by far the best jig when it comes to installing drawer hardware and True Position was actually kind enough to send me a second set for completely free that I will be giving out to one of my subscribers, so make sure you subscribe. But once I have the jig set up, I can go ahead and pre-drill holes. Now I'm not going to install the pool just yet because I'm going to use these holes to actually attach it to the drawer box. Now once again, my drawer box video or drawer installation video is very detailed on how I do this process. So if you want to watch that video, it will be linked down below. You can go check it out. But anyway, using the holes that we pre-drilled, we can run screws in through the face and attach it to the drawer box. And once we have the drawer face attached to the drawer box, we can run screws from the back of the drawer box into the drawer face. I know that's a lot to take in. Trust me, it was hard saying it. But once the drawer face is secured to the drawer box, we can take out the drawer screws and then go ahead and drill all the way through the drawer box. And then we can attach our handle. Simple as that. It's a super easy process. It makes installing drawer faces really easy. Once again, I got a video all on this, how I do this process. It will be linked down below. 
And man, look at that router table. Oh boy, I cannot wait to put this thing to use. But we're still not done, so let's keep on moving forward. Next thing I had to do is figure out how I was going to cover up where the actual router was, because eventually I'm going to put dust collection in here and I need to kind of seal it off. So the first part in this process is going to be cutting a bunch of furring strips to kind of make a box or a rectangle inside the area where the router is. And that'll make a lot more sense here in just a minute when the camera goes back over there. Okay, here we are. So yeah, as you can see here, I've cut these furring strips that go on the top and the bottom. And I'll be installing these using pocket holes. It was very tight. I probably wish I would have used some other method to do it. I'm struggling as you can see here, but eventually I do get it done. And once I have the top piece installed, then we can add glue and do the same thing to the bottom. Now I'm pretty sure here I elected to use brad nails because it was a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, there I am. Yep, using some brad nails. But anyway, once I have the top and the bottom done, I can measure and cut out for the side pieces. And once I have those pieces cut, we'll pretty much install them the exact same way, nice and tight, little friction fit, and then we'll be using a brad nail to attach those just like we did the bottom. Now I think I'm using inch and a half brad nails here. I didn't want them to shoot out the other side, and this piece was, I think, three quarters of an inch thick, and the rest of it was three quarters, so yeah, no issue there. These actually may be called nailer strips, not really sure. But anyway, you get the point. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements and I wanted to seal this off, but I didn't want to put a piece of wood there and kind of, you know, you want to show off the router. It looks cooler or at least that's what all the other content creators do. So I just wanted to follow suit. But anyway, I decided to go with some quarter inch plexiglass. And as you can see here, I'm pretty excited for some reason. And I do want to point out right here that I am using safety glasses. Now, once you cut this plexiglass stuff, little pieces go flying everywhere and when i mean everywhere i mean everywhere look at all the pieces just going crazy i even had the dust collector on and it's just spitting these pieces out at me like 100 miles an hour and they hurt they hurt my wrists they hurt my forearms and uh yeah not really a huge fan of cutting this stuff but next i had to figure out how i was going to attach this i didn't want to just run screws through it i wanted to make it super easy to get to the router when i need to change the speed so in my mind, the only solution that would work would be magnets. So I'm using a Forstner bit here to drill a hole for the magnets to sit inside. So then I added a little bit of CA glue and pushed the magnets into their hole. Now these are sitting about a 30 second below the surface of the wood. Now I contemplated over and over and over what was going to be the best way to get these magnets to line up with the magnets on the plexiglass. And I'm going to tell you, it was a struggle to figure that out. And without having to do very intensive math, which is, you know, I really didn't want to do that, I decided to just add the magnets on top of the magnets that I installed, put a little bit of CA glue, and then press the plexiglass firm and hold it for, you know, about 30 seconds or so until it's set up. And that way, everything should line up perfect. Is this the right way? I'm not sure. But in the end, did it work? Absolutely. And as you can see here, I've got the plexiglass installed, all the drawers are looking great, and this router table is by far turning out to be one of my most favorite builds yet. But we still aren't done. The next thing I wanted to do was add a switch, that way I can turn the router on and off easily. Now I went ahead and installed this switch and realized that I could not drill the hole underneath it to pass the wire, so pretty much had to take it right back off as you can see here. Then we'll just use a hole saw to drill from the outside to the inside and then from the inside of the router box back out. And then once again, I could go ahead and reinstall the router in the lift again. I'm pretty sure I've done this at least six or seven times in this build. I'm not sure why I kept putting it, you know, in and out, in and out. But anyway, now we can add the final hole on the back of the cabinet where we can pass the power cable through the back and allow us to plug it into the wall. Now this hole was kind of optional, you could just leave it on the side of the cabinet, but where I was plugging it into, I wanted it to come out the back. And once I did a little bit of nice cable management, as you can see here, everything is nice and secure and out of the way of the drawer when it slides in and out. And now that all the electrical was done, we can move on to tackling the dust collection. Now I do have plans to put a port on the back to get all the dust from inside where the router is as well as attaching a fitting on the fence so there should be two spots where dust will be pulled from and here i just used a four inch hole saw and then used this power tech fitting for a four inch hose and i'll have all this link down below if you're interested in checking this out 
But anyway, I just ran some 5 8 inch screws in and then making sure I didn't over tighten with the drill, we'll come back and hand tighten till they're snug. So once I have this fitting completely installed, we'll go ahead and move over to installing these brackets. Now I also designed and 3D printed these. Another huge shout out to Travis from Shop Nation for getting me into 3D printing. But we will install these on the back of the cabinet. Now these will actually hold the Y fitting that's also from Powertech. And once I put my head right in front of the camera, of course you kind of can see what I'm doing. But anyway, we got these brackets installed and then we can take the Y fitting and it'll hold the Y fitting just like so. And the reason I'm using a Y fitting is because it reduces it down to two and a half inches to go to the fence along with having the four inch port to go to the middle where the router is actually sitting at. And this is a good view of kind of what the back of the cabinet's gonna look like. And once you have all that completely done, we can move over to putting the hoses where they need to go. Now start by adding the four inch hose to the coupling on the back of the cabinet, as well as adding the two and a half inch hose to the fence. And then I'll follow that up by connecting the other side of the hose to the Y fitting on the back of the cabinet. And once that's done, well, dust collection is complete. So to really make this router table stand out from the rest, I really wanted to add a Grizzly Baby Power Feed to it. But the way I approached it, well, just wasn't the best way to do it. But I'll let the other Eric explain exactly what happened. So in the very beginning of this video, I said I had a little secret. Well, that secret was purchasing this Grizzly Baby Power Feeder and adding it to the router table. And while I'm super excited to have the baby power feeder here in the shop, the way I decided to mount it, well, it's just not so great. Because I was hesitant, I didn't want to drill holes in my brand new top and put threaded inserts in it, which would have been the right way to go because it would have made it solid. I mounted a bracket on the back that I kind of fabricated out of wood and plywood. And I recorded that whole process, but to me there was just no point in putting it in the video because it's not that great. It actually allows the power feeder to flex whenever wood's going through or when it's pulling against the bit. And it just doesn't keep constant pressure on the piece of wood through the router bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that completely out of the video. I'm not going to show that because I will go back and probably drill holes in the top and put threaded inserts and mount it the right way that I should have done it from the beginning. So that was a little thing that I added that I thought would be neat, which is I will add it, but the way that I did it for this video is just not the way that I probably should have done it. So with that being done, we'll get back to the video. And just like that, the router table is done. What started out as a dream is now a reality. I finally get to use this thing for what it was meant to be used for. And if I'm being honest, I had no plan when I was going into this build. I had just watched a ton of videos and took bits and pieces from other content creators and incorporated it into my own router table. With a little bit of help from 3D printing and some CNC magic, I was able to build the router table of my dreams. And finally, being able to do the very first test cut. And was it satisfying? You bet your ass it was. This thing is absolutely perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't been subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn that bell notification on to receive all sorts of notifications when I post videos or post content. And I have not forgot yet, we got to do the giveaway. So if you have stuck around to the end of the video, kudos to you. So let me grab them real quick. So if you are a subscriber to the channel and you commented on my last video, I told you guys that I was going to be giving away this Woodpecker Combo Square Set. Now you got the Mini Double Square, the Combination Square, you got the 8 inch blade, the 6 inch blade, along with the 4 inch blade, and you get two rackets. And the winner for that giveaway is Lewis Lee 3095 so congratulations to you. You need to get a hold of me through Instagram. Probably DM is the best way to do it. I have all that linked down below, all my social accounts. And if you want to see any of the tools or check out any of the things or products that I used in this video, make sure you check all the links. They will be down there in the description. I know it's been a while since I posted, but I'm going to keep trying to post at least a video or two a month. It's going to be a struggle for a little bit because I've got a lot going on, but things you're going to want to see, trust me, I'm going to film every bit of it. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, let me put these back real quick. Bye.